Hi, this is Kevin from the Mathsaurus, and in this video we're doing questions 16 to 20 of the Tamua paper from 2019, the test of mathematics for undergraduate admissions. These are really the hardest questions from these papers, some really challenging questions, but if you think about them in the right way, you can, you can do them pretty quickly. So I hope this is useful. There must be other ways of doing these questions as well. Let me know in the comments if you found a, better, a way that you think is better or just different. Um, always interesting to see that. Um, and uh, please do like the video. Uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, put on the notifications for when I'm putting out future videos uh, like this. Um, check out the Amazon store with some suggestions for wider reading uh, that will help you to prepare for university. Um, otherwise, uh, let's get on with these really tough questions may not be immediately obvious in this one, but we've got a disguised simultaneous equation here. And this reminds me a lot of an old mat question, actually, um, where, we had, where there was a similar trick. So we let a be the integral between zero and one of f of x dx, and we're going to let b be the integral between one and two of f of x dx. And you can see that makes this first equation just 2a plus 5b equals 14. So that's the first hint we've got something simultaneous equationally about this. And when you think about the final answer here, right, the integral between 0 and 2 uh, of f of x dx, that's just the integral between 0 and 1 of f of x dx plus the integral between 1 and 2 of f of x dx. So that will just be a plus b. So the only thing we've got to do is interpret this last bit of information that's the integral between 0 and 1 of f of x plus 1. Right, so imagine I've got a function f here, what's well, the graph of y equals f of x. Right, we know that f of x plus 1 is just going to be that same curve shifted to the left by one unit, right? So if I integrate uh, that curve, f of x plus 1 between 0 and 1, Right, it's just the f of x curve between one and two. I know my graphs don't look exactly like it here, right? But imagine this f of x plus one is just this curve exactly shifted to the left. So, um, so the integral between zero and one for this curve is just going to be that the equivalent bit under f of x here between one and two. So what this says is the integral between between one and two of f of x dx is six, and that's just what I've called b here, right? So b is six, and so we can get uh, a uh, straight away out of this one, 2a plus 5b is 2a plus 30 equals 14. So a equals minus 16 over 2, which is minus 8. And then the value of a plus b that we're looking for for this uh, answer here is just uh, minus 8 plus 6, which is minus 2. And so the answer is c. Right, next one. It says, find the fraction of the interval between 0 and pi for which this inequality is satisfied. Again, if you've done more maths, you might look at sine 2 theta and start trying to do double angle or something, right? But, you know, this is only meant to be based on AS maths mostly, so you're not meant to do that, right? I mean, so there's got to be a, an easier way. Um, so, uh, also, I mean, I'm not really sure why they bother with radians in this paper. I think it would be easier if they just put everything in degrees and said, you know, radians is possibly A2 maths. But anyway, we, we're we looking for a fraction of the interval, so it really doesn't matter here if we work between 0 and pi or 0 and 180. And just for simplicity, I'm going to work I'm going to work in degrees instead of radians. Right, so I've got the product of two things that I want to be positive, right? And so if I have A times B is greater than or equal to 0 here, where I'm thinking this whole first bracket is A and this whole second bracket is B, that can be satisfied either if A and B are both positive, right? Or if A and B are both negative but not if A is positive and B is negative or vice versa, right? So actually all I'm gonna do is think about these two individually, right? So I'm gonna think about sine two theta minus a half and think about when is that greater than or equal to zero, right? Or alternatively, when is sine two theta greater than or equal to a half, right? So between zero and pi or between zero and 180 here, right, sine just uh, sine two theta is just the whole of the usual sine curve, right? Because sine two theta is a squash of the sine theta curve, right? And we know that it's equal to a half then. Well, sine theta is a half at 30 and 150. So this one is going to be at 15 and 75, just half of those, right? So sine two theta is greater than or equal to a half in this range, just when theta is between 15 and 75, okay? 
and then for the other one, sine theta minus cos theta is greater than or equal to zero. Well, that's just when sine theta is greater than or equal to cos theta, okay? So again, between zero and 180, uh, sine theta just looks like this, and cos theta just looks something like this, right? So sine theta is greater than or equal to cos theta um, everywhere here, right? So apart from this first part right now, where so sine theta equals cos theta, um, you know, uh, so that's 45 degrees, you can either uh, write tan theta equals one, or perhaps you just know that, but 45 degrees is the intersection here for sure. So sine theta is greater than or equal to cos theta when theta is greater than or equal to 45 degrees, right? I'm, I'm not worrying at all about things outside of 0 to 180 here when I when I write these bounds, right? You can assume that theta is always also between zero and 180 here, right? So, so if I want the case where a is greater than zero and b is greater than zero, right? So that means I want both of these conditions to be satisfied, right? I want 15 to be less than theta is less than 75. And at the same time, I need theta to be bigger than 45, right? So that gives me, that only happens when theta is between 45 and 75, right? So the width of that interval is 30 degrees, right? Now, uh, the other case we have is a is less than zero and b is less than zero. Uh, obviously less than or less than or equal here doesn't make any difference for this question. Um, so now I want these two things not to be satisfied, right? So I want either theta is less than 15 or theta is greater than or equal to 75, right? And at the same time, I need theta to be less than 45, right? So the only way that that can happen is if theta is between zero and 15 here. So that gives me a total width of 15 degrees that doesn't overlap with, with this bit at all. So the fraction of the interval is 45 degrees here out of the total of 180, which is just one quarter of the interval. And so the answer there is C. Right, question 18, I uh, quite like this question. Uh, shortest distance between the curve y equals x squared plus four and the line y equals two x minus two. Um, doesn't sound too hard, does it? Um, but you know, you really just got to get the first idea, right? So when, where is the shortest distance? Actually, maybe there's other ways of doing this that you might put in the comments if you've got them. But um, so this is y equals x squared plus four, and y equals two x minus two. Uh, it's going to go through minus two here and gradient two. Okay. Notice how throughout this whole paper, like being able to sketch graphs quickly and reasonably accurately, is is, is so important. So the shortest distance here, if you think about it. It's going to occur like if you think about sort of moving this line closer and closer, closer, closer to you know to this curve, right? Um, we're going to get the shortest distance. It's going to occur at the point where a line with gradient two is a tangent to this curve, right? So where uh, I'm sort of moving this line sort of in a parallel way until I touch the curve. So I want to know what point has gradient two on this curve, right? So uh, y equals x squared plus four. Um, so the, the for, for, so for y equals x squared plus four, the gradient dy by dx is equal to two x, and I want that to be equal to two. So that gives me uh, x equals one. So the point that I'm looking for here is one, and its y coordinate is one squared plus four, which is five, right? So now I just need to know, uh, right, what point is this? So I suppose I want to do something like, um, Right, so I, I, I guess I need to work out the equation of this line and see where it intersects this one. Um, tell me if you've got an easy way of doing this, but uh, so this this line here has gradient perpendicular to a line with gradient two, so it's got m equals minus a half, and it goes through the point one five. So using y minus y one is m x minus x one. This is the equation uh, of the uh, of of this of this line. And I want to know where that intersects y equals 2x minus 2. So let's just put 2x minus 2 minus 5 equals minus a half x minus 1. And then we'll solve this for x. So I get 2x minus 7 is minus a half x minus 1. So let's just multiply both sides by minus 2 here and get minus 4x plus 14 is x minus 1. So I get 15 equals 5x. And so x equals 3. So this has coordinate 3 and then two x minus two, so that's six minus two is four. So the shortest distance is just the distance then between 
1, 5, and 3, 4. So using Pythagoras or the distance formula, that's the square root of 3 minus 1 squared plus 4 minus 5 squared, which is the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 5. And then the answer is B. So quite a lot of work to do there, but none of it particularly hard. So you've just got to kind of, uh, you know, keep going with it, right? You know, just, just uh, yes, lots of, lots of individual things that you can do reasonably quickly and get to a good final answer. Right, 19, okay. This looks like a bit of a daunting series, but uh, when you see what this 90 times K is doing, uh, it starts to feel a bit easier, right? So we want to add together all of these values. So let's just think about the sort of terms we get here. When we get K equals zero, it's just sine of 10, and then I'm gonna add on sine of 100, then I'm gonna add on sine of 190, I'm just going to keep going sine of 280 uh, and then I'm going to do sine of uh, 370, right? Now, the thing you notice here is that because uh, sine repeats every 360 degrees, right, the next one's here, so 370, um, and then I'll get 460, etc. right? You know, these ones are all the, everything in this column is going to be the same. Sine of 10 is sine of 370, sine of 100 is sine of 460, etc. right? And further, if you think about these individual values, right? So if I'm at 10 and 100, I get different values. But then if I'm at 190, by symmetry, right? Sine of 190, that's minus sine of 10, right? And similarly, a sine of 280 here, right? That's minus sine of 100, right? So if I get a whole row like this, they all add up together to give zero. So the question really is, how many whole, you know, do I, do I, how many whole rows do I get here? They're all up to zero, and then what have I got left over? Right now, you've got to be really careful here. This sum goes from zero to ninety. It would be easy to say, ah, there's ninety terms. There's actually ninety-one terms because it starts at k equals zero. Okay, so ninety-one terms. That's eighty-eight plus three. So I'm going to get twenty-two rows like this of all four terms, and then I'm going to get something. The last three terms. So I'm going to get something that's equal to sine of ten something that's equal to sine of 100, and then something that's the same as sine of 190. So the 10 and the 190 cancel out in the last one because they're negative, negatives of each other. And all we're left with is something the same as sine of 100. And so that's the answer to this question here, C, sine of 100. Okay, last question here, I guess it's meant to be tricky. And um, it says, what's the complete range of values of K for which these curves, Y equals x cubed minus 12x and y equals k minus x minus 2 squared intersect at three distinct points, exactly two of which have positive x coordinates. And um, so, as ever, sketch of these is the only way we're going to have any hope of understanding what's going on in this question. So uh, I've got a cubic to sketch here, which is x times x squared minus 12. So that's x times x minus root 12 times x plus root 12. And then I've got a quadratic in its completed square form. So I should be able to sketch that pretty neatly if I knew what k was. Um, so let's put this cubic on here anyway. So it's going through minus root 12 and plus root 12 and 0. So uh, it's going to be a positive cubic. It's going to look something like this. And now I'm just going to think about some different values of k. So just imagine, I guess the default k would be somewhere up here perhaps. And I'm just going to, uh, so it's got a maximum point here at uh, 2 and k, right? x equals 2, y equals k is the maximum from this completed square form. So 2 somewhere here, k somewhere here, and then my quadratic looks something like this, and I don't think I get, I don't think I get three distinct points here. But, um, or, or you know, even if I, even if I do, you know, there'd be two of them would be negative here, right? So it's not working. Right, so, so now if I think about moving k further down though, um, then perhaps I perhaps I could now uh, perhaps I could now get uh, three intersections, two of which are positive, right? By doing something like uh, you know uh, positive x coordinates, say sorry, so like maybe 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 if my k was down here or something, perhaps I'll get one here, one here, and then and then some other one way down here, right? So these are the sorts of values that I'm looking at, and I've just got to think how far can I stretch this up and down, right? So if I move k just a bit further back up, 
there's going to be some critical point where I stop getting these two intersections here being the positive x values, right? And that's going to be exactly where this curve goes through the origin, right? The last point where I get them occurring for positive x values is going to be just beyond the origin. So one of my boundaries here is where this curve goes through the origin, right? Where 0 equals k minus 0 minus 2 squared. All right, so that's when um, k is equal to 4. So that's going to be my upper bound, right? So actually, just from that, I'm already narrowing it down, I think, to b and e. And now I think, okay, well, so what I've got to choose between minus 4 and minus 16 for the lower boundary. Well, when does this stop working? Well, okay, at some point, obviously, if I, if I go, you know, if I, if I, if I, if I, go below this curve, then it's not going to work, right? So the last point where it, where it works is going to be just before um, I get uh, a, a k hits the, the red curve here, right? So um, so, uh, so let's see, right? So when I put in, so, so what I need to know is what's the y coordinate of the red curve when x equals 2, right? So if I put x equals 2 in here, I get y equals 2 cubed minus 12 times Two, so that's 8 minus 24, which is minus 16, and that's great because that's one of these two answers here. Right, so the last point this is going to work is when, you know, k is minus 16, otherwise I go below here and I don't get my three intersections anymore. So the final answer here is e, uh, which is that k is between uh, minus 16 and plus 4. So some really hard ones uh, amongst those. Uh, hopefully you got some of that or at least you could follow along with me as I did them. Um, you know, don't forget the aim for this paper is not to get 100%. You know, you're not expecting to do quite as well as you would in an A-level exam. They're meant to be challenging. Um, but, uh, but hopefully this has helped you get just a little bit better at those. So good luck if you're taking uh, the exam this year, whatever this year is. It's 2020 as I say this, but I'm sure this will continue to be useful in the future. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and um, check out the Mathsaurus website where I've got loads more content at GCSE, uh, A-Level, Step, Matt, Tamua, all sorts of things over there. So do have a look at that.